Uh, how did your father live uh, uh, this situation after his third attack when he had to settle down a little bit? And well, he had to adjust himself. That, that was, I think, quite painful for him. But he had to adjust because before his illness, he was totally accessible to, to everybody. He was in the phone book. He received it. He, uh, uh, you know, there was this phone there, and uh, there was no secretary. He wrote his, uh, you know, he, all the red letters were written by him, and uh, people could phone him. He was very, very accessible, and uh, a lot of people dropped in, you know. Uh, so uh, there was a lot of interaction. So, but after his illness, we had to be careful. We had to screen the people, you know, uh, before they came from that door. And after that, they came from my door. So we had to screen the people. And that was unfortunate. He didn't like that at all. So, but he did adjust himself. So we, um, what we did was to, we, we took all the phone calls. And uh, uh, we, you know, the people came. This door was, was locked. And the bell was disconnected. So we had a very drastic uh, situation, but uh, drastic measures we took. Um, but we had to do it for his for his health. But he did adjust himself. He he was all right. Um, you've said that the making of Uteron. Uh, was was forced on you? Not not forced. What what happened was uh, he uh, wrote the first draft of the screenplay. That was sometime in December ninety one, and he was making some further corrections. Uh, that's when he went off to the hospital on the twenty seventh of, of January ninety two. So he went off to the hospital and uh, he never came back. So after that, people wanted the story to be filmed and I said no let's 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 keep it because he wanted to do it himself and that was his film not my film so I kept it you know I didn't I didn't make a, I didn't uh, decide I, I didn't want to uh, film it but you know people came uh, kept pressing me and so, so do it do it for him do it as, as, as a tribute film. So I was a little hesitant at first. And then I realized that I wanted to bring the last screenplay out as a book. I wanted to do it. But cinema is always, the impact of cinema is always much more than literature. So I said, I, I decided to, to go ahead and, and make the film. And Shomitra was very happy. And uh, the entire film was made in a sort of a trance. It was like that because, and uh, uh, it was a homage, a homage film, a tribute film. So everything went up very smoothly. Shomit was extremely cooperative. He gave a, he gave a fine performance, lovely performance. And um, so we made it with the same unit. But very difficult, very difficult, because I was constantly thinking of what he would have done. And that's difficult. That's difficult, because Uttaran was his film, not mine. Should you take a two minutes break? Two minutes, OK. For a smoke? Mm -hmm. Like. Mm -hmm. It's going all right? OK? Yeah. OK. OK? Shana, Shandy Pray, two. Marie, trois sur un, trois sur un, troisième. Next. Next. Um, could you could you explain about uh, the last three films your father made? Do you think it reflects his uh, his view on the society at uh, the time and his view on? Uh, well, he had said it a lot of times, you know, he, he, he did mention, and uh, there are a lot of interviews with him talking about his last three films. Yes, 
his he was a bit well he was a bit shocked by the corruption and by by uh, the disintegration of uh, human values and so that's that's what what he portrayed in the last last three films i did that and it was very uh, it was a very extremely conscious thing he wanted to do it and uh, when he was making his last film the stranger abuntu he told Uttpal Dutt, the main actor who, who played uh, Liantu, that, that you have to be very careful because you are my spokesman in the film. So, you know, learn your dialogues. <laughs> so do it properly. So don't forget. So he was he was very he was very conscious of this fact. Yes, and he he did want to portray this this uh, corruption, disintegration, or whatever in the society. What was his um, relation with Calcutta? Could you speak about his special love for this city? Well, that's again you have to ask him. But uh, uh, but he yes he he did love uh, Calcutta and uh, especially this room and all the other rooms of of the previous two houses. You know uh, he had a study also. Uh, in Lake Temple Road and Lake Avenue, and uh, so he he felt at home in Calcutta. He loved the city, and uh, well, he was born here. He grew up here. He had his schooling here, friends here, family here. So he had a special liking, definitely, an attachment to the city, and he has, you know, told this many times to a lot of people. That uh, that's you know the chair. You know, I, 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 my uh, I'm most creative when I'm here in this chair working, and it did work quite a lot. I mean, he he usually got up when it, when he was um, when he was all right. He got up at around six thirty seven and uh, worked till late at night. So it was about sixteen a.m. to eighteen hours. And what is your own relation with Calcutta? Well, same thing, I suppose. Uh, yes, I think so. It's it's the same thing, and uh, it's it's very. I've I've tried it out, but it's very difficult to work uh, elsewhere. It's very difficult. You know. I have tried. I have tried. I have tried writing scripts in well, maybe in Bombay or in. But it's very difficult. Not in a hotel room. <laughs> you you don't write scripts in a hotel room. It's it's very difficult. Very, at least for me, it's difficult. Um, I've read that Renoir said uh, about your father in '74. He's quite alone, of course. Do you feel this isolation? Well, that's not true, you see, because he, as I told you, he had a lot of uh, friends and relatives, and and uh, people were dropping in. He was totally, you know, he was he was available, and uh, he was in the phone book, as I had said earlier. But you know, uh, we uh, he wanted to be alone, at least for some time. So and we, we we didn't we didn't interrupt we didn't disturb him when he was working, when he was working on a new project when he was working a new film, so we didn't want to disturb him. So that's that's, well, um, he, well it's this is a debatable question you see because uh, but he loved people, he loved to um, interact with people he loved that and. Uh, he was he was always available. He helped quite a lot, and he was there in all the social gatherings during weddings. And uh, he was there. He he was not, you know, aloof. But he he loved to be there. He loved to be among uh, friends and relatives and and well admirers. And uh, he loved that. He loved people. Uh, what we call is in Bengali we we call it adda a d d a, which which. Agontu has a scene of, of you know of the art session where a whole lot of people 
people are gathered and they talk everything under the sun. You know, it's, it's like that. And we, uh, he loved that. He loved that because uh, during Sundays, a lot of people came to him. A lot of people. And he had about, I think it's, he did spend about three, four hours just, just talking and doing nothing, you know. But when he was working, he was, we kept him. We, we, we kept him a little isolated. And uh, especially after his, uh, his illness, as I said earlier, we, uh, we didn't want uh, very many people to be around, you know, disturbing him. And talking is also very strenuous. Talking nonstop for three hours can be, can be, can be a little strenuous. So we kept him a little. He was a little. We had to do it. We, we had to, there was no other alternative keep him a little isolated after his illness. Many people have talked about that period, but they could